And we are back covering Housewives of Potomac, season eight, episode two. I am joined by the lovely, the dynamic, the amazing Dr. Jatia Hart-Taylor. Hello, we're back. Did you miss us? We missed you. We definitely missed you, and we appreciate your dedication, Jitsia. You are out in the conference. You just won an award, and you had yes. to leave the conference to come make sure you podcast about the ladies of Potomac. So we- Yes, it got juicy. We are getting into the season, and yes, I had to. That's why, you know, I'm professionally attired. I got my hair on and everything, um, but, you know, you got to take your break out and, you know, come and see about the Purple Pants podcast and the Posse. So we're here. We're ready. Yes, I heard you had some shout outs this week. You said you wanted to show the, sh- yes, the people on the yes. YouTube uh, that show us love. You wanted to show them some love. So who you got, Jatia? Absolutely. So this one is to my girl at Hope Andrea HFG. So she has been with us. She was commenting last season. So we see you, girl. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. And you were so sweet to say thank you for uh, me being in remission. I appreciate that. It's people like you that have kept me going. Um, I pretend, you know, I am a bad bitch, but, you know, bad bitches need love, too. Okay. Girl, you don't even know that song. Girls need love, too. Girls need... Okay, Summer Walker. Okay. Candace? The Candace, oh. is that a Candace song? No. Okay, we got to drive back, drive back, drive back, but to drive back. The drive back is cute, but anyway, let's drive on back to this episode. Uh, let's yeah, drive let's on back. We are season eight, episode two. It jumps off with my girl, Sheila. And if you know Potomac, then you know Sheila is Ashley's mom. Ashley's mom, who at the start of the franchise was maybe not in the best situation she's a little disheveled uh her and her mother had in a strange know, everybody relationship everybody has the you know starts out with their wigs you know and then they you know step their wig up what? you know you ha- has it. has sheila stepped her wig game up yes <laughs> Okay. You better leave Sheila alone. Look, no. the mom brigade is going to come for you, okay? Listen, I love Sheila. Uh, Sheila and Ashley are, you know, it looked like they at a Lowe's or a Home Depot buying some flowers for Ashley. Should we say So Ashley? I'm going to say that they are not at a whole Lowe's or a Home Depot because I heard the plants there are like trash. So I'm going to give them a garden center. She's at a garden center. She's okay. trying to, you know, choose some plants for her beach cottage in uh that's landlocked in in the city but you know very lovely she's having a housewarming party and mama is you know checking the guest list as mommies do okay now can you have a beach front property and it's not on the water or a waterfront property and Look, it's not on the, the water the beach is not a location it's a state of mind oh is okay what Ashley is saying so as state of mind she's on the beach there's relaxing waves, and that's it. And who are you to like say anything about that? Okay. No, listen, I'm I mad. I'm just trying to figure out: is it Ashley's housewarming or is it Ashley and Michael's housewarming? Mm, it's the LLC. Uh, it's the LLC housewarming yes. because Sheila was asking the questions that we all wanted to know why they was buying the house. Sheila said, "But you." how was the Bahamas? Because if we remember correctly, right after the reunion, when Ashley told us all that, like, she's not getting anything from her divorce and, you know, Michael was popping up at the house, she made it seem like they weren't on good terms. And then, you know, a week later, she popping up in the Bahamas with Michael. Well, you know, they on Bahama good terms. So that's a, that is a status. You know, it's like separated and it's like after separated before divorce, then you're on Bahama good terms. So, okay. yeah. Like well, I mean, enough terms for somebody to pay for you to go to the Bahamas. I understand I, that. I mean, listen, I'm I'm always on good enough terms. If anybody want to pay for me to go to the Bahamas, we always gonna be on good terms. Look, we uh, can be on Hawaii good terms. <laughs> got, we can be on good LA terms, good terms. Paris, right, off Paris good terms. Iceland good terms. Whatever All it is terms. that you need. Uh, but I do think it is good that there are on good terms for their sons. Now, we get Ashley talking to her mom. Her mom wants to know who is coming. And we get Ashley finally mentioning uh, the new housewife, NECA, who- Wait, wait, is it NECA or NECA? Oh, it's NECA. 
you gotta you gotta, gotta stay with the nectar. nectar. Uh, mm-hmm. And we see mm-hmm. Ashley. Uh, you know, she's a friend of Ashley's. Now we know how friend of Ashley's kind of goes sometimes, but right. you know, we'll we'll get to Deborah when we get to Deborah. But uh, everything that she seems to be saying about Necca, I like. Right? I think yeah. you know. Um, then Ashley, mom Sheila is like, uh, what's going on with the lawsuit with Candace and Michael? First of all. Inquiring minds want to know. Thank you, Sheila. Sheila, I don't care what her wig looked like. Okay? okay, I don't care what your wig looked like. If you come in with the questions, baby, she was coming with the funk. She was coming with the pain. What's she, the lawsuit like? That's what she, I want. To and Ashley, politely, okay. like, <laughs> just how we <laughs> said. Just like how we said last episode when Robin was dancing around things and even when Ashley was dancing around things about Michael, I felt like Ashley was doing the Ashley dance about this. Like, I'm not privy to that. I don't know. I don't know. Like, girl, you know more than what you're saying, but it's okay. Um, I like it when she tap dances. She's a very proficient tap dancer. You know she's a great dancer, so clearly that includes tap. So, I mean, we at least we get to see this that, you know, there is this lawsuit uh, between Candace and Michael because Michael Darby well, said, public record, as Ashley says, if you want to know, it's public record. You can just go look it up yourself. And here's the thing, though, right? I ain't really mad at Michael with this lawsuit. You slinging these allegations left and right, whether they may be true or not, we don't know. But Michael said, you damaging my business. And guess what? If you damaging my business, I'm going to need all of Dottie's money. Okay? (laughs) Don't come for my coins, is what Michael says in true white man fashion. He's like, you know, I'm offended and we're suing. Yeah. So. Yeah. And Michael's saying it's like, yeah, this might be a TV show for you, but I got assets and liabilities and I ain't playing with that. So it is interesting to see how this lawsuit will play out. Uh, We then take it to Karen and Mia. Uh, They meet up because last season it seemed like, okay, (laughs) first of all, I ain't even mad at a Karen, right? Like, first of all, if I'm not banging with you, I'm not banging with you. I might have to film with you, but we're not going to do the fake stuff. And so that's where I give the grand dom her grand domness because she served that intro. Like, uh, uh, oh, no, 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 we are not. Or we ain't on that type of terms, but I will meet and film with you. We're not doing that. Take this hand, business partner. And so essentially Robin, I'm not Robin, essentially Karen lets Mia know that like, all that stuff that you were saying last season. Now, mind you, when I was watching it, I was like, now, is Karen denying this? Or is Karen, because then, you know, she goes to the institution and she goes to, like, all of these things. But, like, I ain't hear Karen say, like, and that's absolutely not true. Well, I mean, again, a great tap dancer. She's basically like, she like Michael, but with relationships. You are messing up my family unit. That's what she's saying. You are messing with my family unit. And, you know, don't come here with rumors. So Karen only wants you to bring up her uh, cheating if you have um, pictures of her in the act. I don't know. I don't get it. But whatever. Yeah, like, I get what she's saying. If you're my friend, don't come with that. Don't do that. Right. But look, Mia's like, I'm trying to stay on this show, dude. Okay. I'm trying to stay on this show. we locked out of the family accounts. Okay, I had to downsize to a twenty. You know how apartment. many square feet I'm living in right now? I'm gonna say what I got to say. That's what Mia is about. Okay. And so, yeah, I, you know, we love Mia. So they were able to get to an understanding that, listen, they are going to work on their friendship. Uh, they they hand shook on it, and that's kind of sort of where we were at. We then meet Candace's new manager. I guess Michael got not Michael. I guess well, is it no Chris got demoted and candace has a new manager uh she is this is another thing that and again go ahead so she cites the hundreds of thousands that she spent to go on tour and you know the good thing about this is that she recognizes that it's the problem if you spend in hundreds of thousands of your own money to go on tour so now she is looking for an upgrade she's trying to you know get to a higher caliber of record label Hopefully one that, you know, puts money behind her. So she's trying to, you know, get her own little space and, you know, do that. So I get it. Right. Then they mention, if you watch Real Housewives of Atlanta, they mention Drew Sedora. We know that we've seen that awkward performance of her at the reunion. Uh, But Drew has been on tour. She's done some dates with Tamar. And so we have seen Drew and Candace perform 
at her last season show. And, you know, the manager is like, we are coming back. I believe it might have been Chicago or it might have yeah, been Detroit. Said, so Drew is from Chicago. That I do know that. Drew Sador is from Chicago. So, you know, she used to get the hometown crowd. And then Little Miss, of course, properly says, I don't need her. I, don't, I sold out Chicago last time. I wasn't there. I didn't even hear about it. But, you know, she, she sold it out. So she's like, you know, I really don't need that. So I was like a little. It, it can't hurt. It can't. Maybe she could split the hundreds of thousands at least for that tour stop. You know that tour stop instead of her spending all that money. So I'm yeah, just saying. I I was confused because it's like, I feel like collaboration is great. And especially when you guys are both from the same housewife franchise, you both are on the same level. Like, I think it would be great. It's the same audience. And Drew has actually been in the game way longer than her. You know, she ain't opening for Tamar. She needs to be nice to Drew so Drew can introduce her to Tamar and she can get on some stocks. You know, it's like, don't block your blessings, boo. Right. I didn't understand that. But I mean, fast forward, they have performed after this together. Uh, so that right. was interesting to me. And then, baby, we get to Robin and Juan. Uh, and I don't care. I don't care. I just, I was like, and again, I just have to say, I'm a part of the green eyed bandit posse. I love me, Robin. I love me some Giselle. And, you know, Robin bringing the intervention that Giselle had up with Juan. And Juan is like, why y'all talking about this? Why y'all bring this up? Uh, Juan, because it's in the news. Juan, because you are being photographed different places and different things. And the thing that shocked me the most with Juan was when Robin was like, you know, what do they expect me to do? Like, you know, cry about it. And essentially I felt like what Robin was saying, like, well, it's not a good look for me for you to be photo, even if I know the the state of your relationship with this assistant coach, even if it's like one of your best friends, given this scandal that we are in right now, it does not reflect good on me for you to be photographed like this. If you could just use a little discernment and it seemed like Ron was like, I don't care. And him so saying that. That's, that's what kind of pissed me off because it's, it's bringing your wife pain. She's your partner. You care about her. And, and it is affecting her. So then you should change your behavior, point blank. It's like, you know, it's like saying if you hurt somebody, it don't matter if you meant to hurt them, but you hurt them and you care about that person. You should do something to try and alleviate their pain. But he's being selfish and he like, you know what, I'm going to do whatever I care, care and everybody else should change, not me. And then at the end of this conversation, he leaves off by saying he's such a great person and he puts everyone before him. And Robin agrees. Except and I'm wife. like, girl, except your, like, wife. except your wife. And so, again, I love Robin, but I feel like when we see scenes like this, it really makes me believe the narrative that we hear that they have an arrangement. Maybe they like, you know, just for her to be all hunky dory with like what he is saying like i don't know i don't like that I, I i don't like that for you boo i i really don't i don't like it for her and i don't like it for any woman um you know I, it just seems like if your partner does not care about your feelings and it's like something so trivial it's like don't go to get your nails done with another lady it's not like don't text her on the phone don't have a relationship but how about just for the next year don't do that. It's like, that's that's an easy thing. It's not like he, she's asking you, don't ever go out again with your boys. Don't ever talk to any women. It's just like, hey, how about let's not do something that calls public attention to you and other women because it's, the block is hot. So you should care about that. Yeah, that's it. That, and especially when you're not filming with me getting pedicures, right? Like, Correct. I think that it, Correct. like, that was weird to me. Also, another thing that they brought up last episode, uh, Robin did reveal to us that Juan lost his job at Compet State. And essentially, she said it was just because they weren't winning games and this and that. Now, this episode, it seemed like it was, had more it's to do with the lawsuit. lawsuit. Right. So it's, you know, mandatory reporting and, you know, basically not taking care. So there is an active lawsuit. I'm not saying, you know, innocent can prove guilty. But again, that's another reason why you should want to be seen in a positive light is because you got a damn pending lawsuit. You trying to get a new job and you on TV talking about, I don't care. I don't care how I make other people look. I don't care how I make other people feel. That's not a good look, dude, for your career too. Right. And again, if it, 
I'm only bringing this up because they brought it up. It's like, I did everything right. I did everything right. I did, well, I mean, well, did you do everything right? Because if you did everything right and followed the procedures, I'm just... Uh... Well, not only that, but, and I get that maybe Robin doesn't want to like go against him on camera, but I hope she is doing it off camera because right. yeah, like maybe, okay, you want to put up United Front, you on camera, you film it, but I hope she roasted his ass off camera. I hope she is roasting him and she needs to be. And I hope that this is not exactly how they act when they're off camera. I could see, you know, putting up a United Front, which I like other women, I feel like they put up a United Front. Her, uh, it's a little suspect. That this look like they had how to be all the time. So, yeah. So, but I mean, I love my girl Robin, and you know, I love Juan, and I hope that they can work it out. We then officially get to meet our girl Neca and yes. her husband. They Ike. Ike, they uh, they they are currently buying a new, or they just bought a new home in Potomac, actually in Potomac. So you know, okay, kudos to you. Uh, we learned that they don't have any children, um, and we learned like I like Neca. I feel like Neca's personality is very interesting. Now, I wanted to ask you this because she talks about uh, they ran into some dilemmas closing on their house because they did not disclose these other properties. Then you know, Potomac be shady or Bravo be shady, and they start listing all of these properties that they have. And oh, I was, but you. one first of all, I felt. Like Giselle, you don't ha you don't have a home. No, I have five. Homes. Okay. So first of all, I live for a good Bravo graphic. So when the map popped up, my my eyes were like, yes. My soul was singing like Candace on Drive Back, oh. and it was like, oh, you have homes here and there and here and there and there and here. I was loving it. So um, I knew it was about to be a shade fest when they brought up the map of the United States. So they have homes in Wisconsin. They have homes in Maryland, a home in Florida, some in New Jersey, and oh, <laughs> about a thousand places in Nigeria. Loved it. I was all over it. Now, and yes, you can, like, your clothing can't, you got to tell everything you own and you are responsible for paying for. So clearly they work through it, though. But what would be a reason that someone would not list all of their properties on uh, your mortgage loan? I don't know why you wouldn't list all of your properties, um, because the whole point is they want to know how much debt you have. So how much you have to maintain. And then they look at your income and they want to see a certain debt to income ratio. Um, and so if they find out that you are not hiding something, they have to do their due diligence or it's their fault. Um, so I don't know why you would hide it though. And like, let's be honest, don't, don't do it. Look, they gonna find it. They gonna find it. Don't play with your taxes. Don't play with your, um, real Child estate. Support. Mm -mm. Look, housewife history uh, has shown. And so that is, I feel like, is this the producer's foreshadowing? Like, I don't know, because I just felt like, what was the need for them to show us and tell us that? And especially with that graphic, I said, oh, okay, let me write that down in my notes, because now we need to keep up with NECA. Um, we then get to Wendy, and we learn that not only is Wendy a professor, She's a multi he has hyphen it. Is that what you called oh, it, right? Okay. Mom, a wife, a professor. Um, a, and now I'm starting my own talk show. Okay. Well, I'm trying to figure out did the candles ever drop? Oh, you didn't get your five wick? I, I didn't get my, I mean, I, it was given one wick. I didn't get my one wick candle. Um, so now this season, it looks like Wendy's new venture is a talk show. Um, Wendy, what it Wendy's win Wendy's wisdom. Uh Wine with We're gonna Wendy. We're going to keep working on that. We're, wine Wednesdays, Wednesdays with Wendy with wine and wisdom. I what, don't what, know. What would Wendy do? What would Wendy do on Wednesday with wine? Uh, uh, now, let me ask you this. Would trademark. You, hashtag trademark. I just okay. okay. Would you uh, tune in to Wine with Wendy? Uh, no. Would you tune into what Wendy would do? Um, no, no. So I wouldn't, but I would turn it like tune into uh, Wine Wednesday with Wendy with wine. I don't know. She had to have a very long title for me. I don't know. Like she needed to get a focus. We talked about this, I think, last season, how she is like all over the place and she needs to get herself a very good focus. 
She needs to do like some market research to see who she resonates with. Um, it seems like she's a villain. So I would tell her to embrace that villain tree, villain, villain, Valencian, whatever. She need to just go ahead and be the villain and maybe do a messy podcast, do something else. But like, she doesn't understand that everybody has a podcast. So what's your hook? Yeah, and then it's like, girl, I need you to get a handle on this budget. You supposed to be this professor that owns the world. You didn't know the budget for the candles. You didn't know the process. Everything was up to Eddie. And now it seems like, you know, they are touring this home, which really looks like a co-op workspace that are all over the places. It looks like, like a we defunct WeWork. I mean, it looks nice, but they were like, we could do this here. We could do that. Like, girl, just do, listen, just... Go on ahead and do a YouTube page. Get like Dr. Heavenly from Married to Medicine. Like it just seemed like, and then when they were talking about the budget and Wendy saying this, 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 this. And then Wendy also saying it's like, well, the money that we've spent already, we're over budget. And her producer friend was like, well, girl, this ain't, this, this the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, she's everywhere. You know what? I think she could do something successfully, but she, again, she needs to figure out what she wants to do. And I get it. I'm a person who wants to do everything too, but you can't, honey. So you need to, and if you want it to be successful and hopefully get investors, cause you know, that should be, you know, the goal, then you need to figure out what it is that you do and focus on it and be good at it, which I'm sure she would be. Right. And I, again, you know, Wendy might not be my favorite on the show, but I think Wendy is, first of all, her glow up is amazing. I think mm -hmm. that she is educated. I think that she, first of all, she be getting the girls together. Like, you know, she can speak. Um, Sometimes it's just like, you know, but so I, I, I definitely think that Wendy is dynamic. What are your thoughts on these housewives that have to have a new something every season? Well, I don't think they should have a new something every season, but I think like, Honestly, if you go on reality TV and especially a show like this, you should be selling something to, to be quite honest. You should be selling something. You should be promoting yourself somehow uh, because you have so much exposure. It makes sense. So I'm all for, you know, LaDom, Embellish, Reasonable Shady, all of those. Loving mm -hmm. it. Drive back. I'm all about getting your coin. So you should have something. Um, but I think I think she is the one who is just kind of like just does not know her niche and i want her to find it like you know again all the things you said she got the glow up she's pretty but it, you know she's educated she just need to find her lane right and my thing is like i'm not mad at you first of all i think this is uh the best platform for you to be experimenting and doing different things my only issue is well girl where are the other things that you have created like where are why aren't we seeing you prepare for class why aren't like i love it when they go on the girls trips and Wendy has to then, you know, go on MSW, NBC and like, you know, doing a like, I just feel like where is more of that, Wendy? Why don't you have the candles stationed at your home? Like, it's just like for in me. In the just, background, like she should just, you know, like every time she's on, she should have a candle or like if she wants to do pins or whatever, you should wear the pins all the time. Like you got to push your brand and you have to be very consistent. But every time. It's something different, you know, so I think she should do something, you know, actually with the teaching and, you know, even selling classes or selling courses or giving advice on her area of expertise with a little shade. I think that would be a great thing. Hashtag trademark, whatever okay. I just said. And say what you want about Giselle, but at least I feel like they always be like, oh, Giselle, don't give us nothing. We don't know. But like, I, I feel like a constant storyline has been her home and we have seen it and her time and time. Too. Time and time again, they talk about her outfits, but you know, we see improve. You know, she had Hugh Beauty, but you know, Karen yeah. let us know at BravoCon that it is no more. Uh, but she's got reasonably shady with Robin that is very successful. And I know this season we will see the launch of Ashley and Giselle's workout gear. So it's like y'all love to hate on Giselle, but like at least Giselle's track record is consistent and continuing to show us through the seasons, I feel like Wendy just be hitting it and quitting it and being like, this is the next one that I got. And that's like, I really feel like her claim to fame at this point is just your friendship with Candace and Karen. Yeah, like you, yeah, we never had anything that caught traction, like not the relationship between her and her husband. She don't really want to talk about her husband. Like she had the whole beauty makeover and that was a little bit, but that's, you know, over. Like, I, she could sell stuff 
you know, lingerie for after you have had a booty lip. Like she can do all these sort of things, but you have to be, again, like you said, consistent with it. So anyway, I, I hope she gets it together though. I mean, wish her nothing but the best. Girl, you got something there. Just dig for it, honey, and, and do it. Love it. Right. And honestly, which I think will come to fruition later in the season but mm. one of wendy's biggest attributes on the show was her mother do you remember when she was recovering from she had to have like some type of procedure and you know the mom was over there like you want someone like you know i think wendy mom is like where's my bag at like i think wendy's mom is funny and interesting and i think it would bring a lot to it now mind you i hear the mother and what they i don't the ebo and the, I, osu, I, osu. the osu i feel like you know that is going to be a big storyline uh with wendy so whether she likes it or not her mother is coming back uh karen look anytime a mother wants to come on a housewife show i'm here for it okay because they never leave any crumb tiny dotty be bringing it sheila be bringing sheila it, be bringing I don't it. Know what mama name is but it's pure comedy and it's also just like a built-in source of um conflict between the housewives you know like just like if you bring a husband in it's always some conflict you know if you could deal with that mothers are you know comedic and dramatic and drama gold mine so I bring know. the mom so but Ooh, i mean they should have like a real mom of that would be good oh my gosh could you i, I think that? so too but i also feel like off topic of uh Potomac, but on topic of the Housewife franchise, they have these shows like Summer House and Below Deck. I would really love to see a getaway, oh, a weekend getaway with the kids of the Housewives. Like, you know, Nene's son, Kim's daughters, because, you know, they need the money right now. Uh, You know, the Countess's children, Karen's daughter, Raven. Like, I would love to see these children that we have watched grow up. Uh, Cairo, Sheree's son. I would love to see them all interact. I think that that would be such uh, an interesting housewife continuation of the franchises. I agree. They should, they should, they should think about doing like a summer house or winter house or just a, a getaway. Or like kids, kids trip. Kids trip or like, you know, you know kids weekend kids or something. Trip. Right. I think that that would be so amazing or especially like how they do girls trip. I think that that would be great. Then we see Karen is uh, doing Pilates and she's, you know, she is worried about her health because she is her hitting triple 20, her triple 20. Now, mind you, I ain't mad about that. OK, I ain't mad about that because I'm approaching my. What are you approaching? How first old? 20. So I'm Your not at first my, my first 20. So I'm not. Karen oh, okay. got two more 20s on me. I'm approaching my first 20. So, oh, uh, OK. Power of 20. The power of 20. So it's like, you know, I get it. But I, I like that. I, I like how Karen is remixing it. Uh, but then now I think health. Hey, is podcast people, we're just possibly we're just going to let that go. We know that's an obvious lie. We're not. It's stupid. not. OK, what else? It's what, what year were you born then? Juan and I mm. do so much for people. And I don't need to lie. I don't need to tell like, you know, I'm a you. I stand a united front with the Dixons. OK. Oh my God! Was just getting you his nails you done. You guys are so honest. You know, you both don't care. Like you don't care. You don't I care so how much you are, or if it's the truth. You know. I'm approaching my first twenty, so uh, I think health is important. And you know, last season we saw Mia go through an alleged health. Look, she was she was concerned about her health, so we'll say health care and leave it at that. And so Karen brings up this 5% calcium buildup. I mean, I think that is important, but. Five... I'm glad she's bringing up heart health. Right. I, I don't think that five, a 5%, five you know, cartilage buildup is, is horrible. And, you know, I think she says that she does try to make it seem like it's something that's not, but she does say, you know, and I'm committed to continuing to have, a healthy life. So I like that. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. So again, we all about the health, but I was just like, oh, like, have are we taken? Because you know, Karen likes to borrow, reinvent, create different things that the other housewives has done, i.e., candle, i.e., 
live show and I have been to Karen's live show. And I just was wondering, like, I wonder if like you taking a page out of Mia's notebook a little bit. Like I, I wasn't sure. No, I did not know you, you were going there with that. But, you know, she really tied it back to her parents and, you know, her mom specifically and her having heart conditions. So, you know, it's a it's a throwaway child, you know, whatever she got to do. So we can see their legs, you know, up in the air at Pilates. So cue to the legs up in the air. That's where we're at. My heart is, you know, almost breaking. Now let's get some air on our vaginas. Come on, get on the pants, put them in the air, you know, so. I've never done Pilates. I really want to take a Pilates class. It looks like interesting. Although the machine looks little medieval and a little what do they call it bdsm a little you know little dominatrix you know, i know I, you know what bdsm is go ahead i don't i, for that one. I don't so, i am a young christian boy okay all right pearls um i love pilates it's great especially on the machine so usually it's like the cadillac and the reformer are the two big machines i love it it works all those smaller intricate muscles that you know us women need to balance it's good for your pelvic health so love it and it was originally you know developed by ballet dancers and you see how they look in them tights so hello i mean i am mad and why we are wrapping up the pilates giselle brings up robin and you know the girls kind of give their two cents about the robin and juan situation um i uh I appreciate Giselle or because I feel like they always feel like Robin and Giselle, they're one in a kind. Like, you know, and so I, I like when they bring up things with the other that ladies. That they disagree on. Yeah. So, I mean, we've seen a couple of these things that they disagreed on. And so, you know, everybody basically said, yeah, we tried to get to her and she shut us down. What you going to do? You can't do nothing about that. She got, look, it's like. It's like when you at church and you at the altar and they say, come to Jesus, like you got to walk to the altar before we can help you. So if she ain't willing to get up out her seat and go to the altar, then all they can do is support from afar. So, you know, that was kind of the wrap up from that. I mean, what else can they say? And conveniently, they, you know, had this conversation before Robin got to the party. Right. And well, then they also talk about and. They also talk about Candace and Ashley and whether or not, like, Ashley is going to invite Candace. And Karen, we get to see the flashback of Karen meeting with Candace. And Candace is, has a previous engagement, so she can't make it. Uh, yeah, she but. has a probably a tour stop in Chicago that she paid so much money. You know, she's not, like, getting her deposits back. So she got to be there. So, you know, I thought that was interesting. Again, more foreshadowing that it seems to be that this buildup between Ashley and Candace is going to be a major storyline in this season. Then we finally get to the shore. That's not the shore, but it feels like a beachfront home. Ashley's home is beautiful. Uh, we get to Ashley's housewarming and shout out to Uncle Lump. Okay. We what? love a good, okay, we love Uncle Lump. He ain't, he, look, the wool is not going to be pulled over his eyes. So all kind of secrets are being revealed. Somebody uh, drops the nugget that Ashley actually went to the Bahamas that, you know, they're in uh, their Bahama friends and that they can go to the Bahamas together. And Uncle Love was like, well, um, I know about that. I and know then, about that. And I no, talked to you. His voice got real high. Um, and she was like, yeah, because when we were FaceTiming, I just conveniently forgot to tell you that. So Uncle Lump was like, you know, whatever, y'all young focus, if that's how y'all want to live your life. You know, he's trying to be supportive. So it's funny to me because what Lump is doing to Ashley is what Ashley is doing to Robin. Like, okay, girl, if that's what you want to do. So I thought that was kind of interesting and a little bit poignant, you know? Yeah. And so we've been waiting and waiting and waiting. We get to this housewarming and it definitely delivers. But in true Bravo fashion, as it starts to heat up, we have to wait until next week. But Giselle is there. Uh, mm. Karen is there. Shasha. Uh, Shasha is there, and mm -hmm. Giselle makes a very acute observation that Karen and Sharice kind of got the same outfit on. Yeah, again, uh, twinsies. Again. Uh, and it just, first of all, leads to the fact that, like, Karen and Sharice are more alike than they are apart. And I really don't understand the Karen dislike for Sharice. Like, 
Come on, you know, don't be, don't be, don't, don't do that. Like she I, greeted her very nicely, you know. Um, it was warmer than a handshake, but you know, was not a hug. You know, it was the we see each other kind of moment from across I, the room. It just gives me that Karen just does not want Sharice around or doesn't want because again, oh yeah, it, I, oh yeah, I agree. Definitely. In the first season, you know, Karen might have proclaimed to be the grand dame, but it was very clear that Sharice was the glue to the group. Uh, she had the relationships with Robin, with Karen, with Giselle, uh, and with, uh, what's her name? What's the girl name? What's the girl name? Uh, she didn't lost her kids. She was with the, uh, uh, what's her name? Katie. Katie. Uh, oh, yeah. <clears throat> She had the connections. And so clearly after season one, it seemed as though Karen kind of took off and we loved Karen. And then after season two, Shasha was kind of sort of phased out. And it seems like Robin and Giselle go to bat to have Shasha around. And I feel like they only do that to like urgh, turn the knife in yeah. with Karen. So, I mean, I told you, I, I, this is my theory. Shasha just didn't want to share like Karen wanted to share. And you know why Shasha, uh, you know, they don't like each other. She just, they just had the recap where Shasha was just basically saying that she go out to Vegas and get it popping with whoever is available, you know, and also all this stuff. And Karen is like, don't mess with my family unit. So, you know, that's, that's where she draws her line. That's where she made her line with Mia. So, you know, I, I, she's consistent. She's consistent. I just, yeah, I just feel like <clears throat> if, Karen, what do you feel? Tell me what you feel. I feel What's like you? she's all about womanhood and supporting women, and, and we've seen you make up with Giselle. We've seen you make up with these other women. I just feel like what's wrong with having a conversation? Like she don't want to shoot no scenes with Shasha. She don't want nothing to do with Shasha. And I just I don't love that. Shasha got the goods. I mean that's it. Shasha got the goods to take her down, and she don't want to be taken down. And so it seems as though. The fact that Karen does not like Shasha so much, it almost kind of gives validity to some of the things that Shasha is saying. Oh, I think there's some, I, I definitely think there's validity to what Shasha is saying. So I'll give you that. I definitely think there is validity to what Shasha got on Miss Karen. So um, um, self preservation, I get it. I I really feel like, and it was all about the people's entrances, right? Wendy's entrance, I feel like she wanted to make a moment. Like, oh, let me go say hi to Karen. And mind you, Giselle's face was ready. Giselle was like, I ain't speaking to her. Keep it moving. Then it was weird because then she had to go back in and say hi to Sharice, which was awkward in itself. And then Mia is just standing here. Uh, so it's like, it's very clear. Wendy, don't bang with Mia or Giselle. And so that's interesting. I will say Wendy did look good in her white boots. You know, Wendy showed up. I thought Wendy looked cute. I thought it was okay. Okay. Uh, and so then all of the girls are sitting, chatting, and then NECA arrives. And it seems... Mm, NECA. 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 Swallow first. NECA. Yeah. NECA. There you go. NECA arrives. And it is very clear that... There is some beef between NECA and Wendy. In Wendy's confessional, they're like, have you, uh, it seems like you know her. And then she, bitch, uh, then she turns she, in. She went straight Mariah Carey but, on her. I don't know her. I'm sorry. I don't know her. Like, so that was funny to me. Um, and then she tried to count the times and then she settled at, oh, I've seen her in passing. Like, I'm not even going to count the times. So clearly, you know who that girl is. You know who the hell she is. You know what I'm saying? Like, Come on. And to make the interaction even more awkward, as soon as NECA arrives, Ashley with her corona is like, Wendy, let me bring you inside so we can talk. Right. And then they go into talking and child, and, uh, Ashley going to do it. Messy. Messy. And it's funny because then after in her confessional, she was like, oh, did I stand like that? Oh, well, I'm, I got to stop drinking. She knew what she was doing. Like you bringing that girl in with a bang, give her her, give her her storyline. I right, love like, it. I think, I think Wendy was jealous because she feel like another lady is coming into her niche. So I think that had something to do with it. And then Ashley, of course, is bringing her friend in strong, bringing her in strong by giving her a beef with, you know, a, a, somebody she can win a beef against. Like nobody's going to go to bat 
for Wendy. So it's it's like Karen it's and gift. Candace. You know Candace gonna go to bat. You know Candace will go to bat for her friend Wendy. Yeah, but she's just as messy, so it don't matter. Like it's not like um she was put up against a main character who can hold their own. Like if 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 Ashley would have put her in conflict with one of the Green Eye Bandits or with um the Grand Dame, she'd have been done for. She'd have been done for. So she gave her a nice little, here's a first season, nice setup fight that you could hold your own in. So, you know, shout out to Ashley for thinking that through and giving her friend something to get her in the group. So I appreciate that. Well, well I, don't think, I didn't think about it like that, but I mean, I guess when you explain it like that, uh, it makes sense. And, you know, you are smart. You do have a PhD. So I think that that is... Not a medical, but it's, it's like a doctor of philosophy, you know. So, but you, so, still, you and, still call me doctor. And speaking of that, uh, Ashley brings that up to Wendy that NECA was asking about whether or not Wendy was a medical doctor or a doctor of philosophy. Yet what another little piece of mess. Again, Ashley setting her friend up for a nice, you know, a nice bar, you know, over something trivial. And you know that's going to set Wendy off. Like, she gave her something to set Wendy off. Like, don't do that. Don't come for Wendy's. Like, she feels like that's her bread and butter, being Nigerian, being a good Nigerian, being smart, having her PhD. And so this is definitely a conflict that they are setting up. And I am here for it. Thank you. What are your thoughts on NECA asking about the PhD, you being a doctor yourself? Well, first of all, I'm team Wendy on the actual um, <laughs> argument of it, like totally. So, but she know, like when you do that to somebody, you are clearly trying to start shit. You know what a damn PhD is and an MD. They both doctors. If you want to really be specific, call an MD a physician. That's it. That's that's how you, you know, if you were well, they both doctors, but the MD is a physician. So she was being messy. She was. Interesting. Uh Ashley's friend Deborah arrives. So it is interesting that we Debra, are going to see Deborah, who is a hot bitch, clearly, because everybody wanna look at her. Okay. Everybody wanna look at Deborah, according to Deborah. So I just think it is so funny because Deborah. Mm, not you know. I, I, I thought I thought Deborah looked cute this episode. I thought I I definitely thought Deborah looked cute with her ponytail that came in, and I like her bubbly personality. I thought well, there's was... nothing wrong. I, I don't I don't like to comment on how people look because beauty is an eye of the beholder. But like when she looked busted, I'm talking about her clothes, not her face, you know, or whatever. She didn't look that put together, and she's just a mm, for me, you know. It so. Is. Whenever but, every, I, but clearly cute enough for every man to want to stare at her. Y'all know y'all want a piece of Deborah. Giddy, honey. giddy Eddie. I think whenever I think of NECA, I just, I happy Eddie. I think of when she was like, yeah, that was at the bar and Chris was all in my face. And then when Bravo rolled the footage. And he was like. But yeah. here's the thing though, right? <laughs> and I'm, I'm not taking up for Deborah. There is a, well, first of all, Bravo just released three sec a three second clip. They were I just feel they were like there could have been more interaction after that clip, right? Like I just feel like that, in my opinion, that didn't vindicate Chris. I'm not saying it happened, but I'm just saying like I like that three second clip. First of all, it, it don't take a man two seconds to holler at her. Like I just felt like that didn't necessarily vindicate Deborah. For me, it just was hilarious that, like, they was dogging her out like that for her to be saying all that stuff. And then you get the clip of Chris on his phone looking up and barely speaking. So I thought that that was. Deborah clearly thinks everybody is hot for her. Um, so, you know, I'm glad that she has that level of self-confidence. You go, girl. Well, I mean, again, you know, I follow these Instagram accounts that, you know, follow a lot of the Housewife franchises. And listen, there is another physical altercation a brawl that happens this season and it is at the launch of Giselle and Ashley's uh clothing brand and it is definitely involving you sure, you sure it wasn't Deborah. just like a demonstration of you know the stretchability of their work uh, workout wear now no I of mean, their athleisure it, oh it was a brawl and the video clips and, and a lot in the 
uh, people in the clips was thinking, is that Giselle? Because there was a woman in there that kind of like, and it's funny, but I'm sure we'll get to it when we get to it. But listen, I feel like Deborah is going to be a crucial friend of the show. And of course, as the episode is getting ready to wind down, who shows up? Bump, 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 bump. It's Miss Dick. Uh, 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 Miss Dixon, Miss Dixon. Oh, Robin struts it on. She sh slithers on in. And, okay, she slithers in. And, again, she is, it's appearing that this probably is the first time that the majority of the ladies are together this season. And she is ready to go into the lion's den. And, you know, in her confessional, she's like, I'm not hiding from anybody. If anybody want to ask me a question, I'm here for it. And I am sure on episode three, we are going to get to the things of the things of the things. Now, I will say this about Robin. She does not back down from a challenge. Um, if you remember, you know, her and Monique. With the umbrella. With the umbrella. With the umbrella. So, and... Um, like she doesn't back down, so I, don't, I do like or that. Ashley, Ashley, and Michael yes, at the uh, Australian uh, restaurant. Yes. I was like, oh, so um, and you know, Robin was a basketballer, she'll check a bitch now, like you know, she'll set up a pick on you and you'll be on the floor trying to run up on. So, I, I think she can definitely reference. hold her own. Um, I think she should, you know, just chill. Um, I think she should take some tap lessons from Ashley, even though she tapped around a whole season of the whole She was waiting game. for Karen to bring it up. She right. was waiting. Like, I, I, she was ready to answer any questions. Nobody brought it up. So, but I am interested to see if any questions do come up. Oh, you know, you know they had a good there. time talking behind her back. So, you know, we'll see. And I'm ready. I'm ready for the NECA showdown. Um, that is sure to happen. Um, I wonder if they're going to bring up the whole Osu. Um, I'm going to have to Google Osu um, to be up on it because I need to know. Inquiring minds need to mm -hmm. Osu. And Wendy was saying that that is a thing, but her family isn't what they are saying because Bravo was at there or Ashley was at that party. And if what they were saying is true, no right. one will and be nobody there. Nobody fool who Osu. So they was in their party and you don't party with Osu. So, you know, we'll see if it was just mess that NECA was uh, bringing up to get in the group or Ashley was bringing up on behalf of NECA. It will pan out, honey. We will find out. And like I said at the beginning, inquiring minds want to know maybe they should have Sheila there too also asking about Osu. I think. Okay, because Sheila will that. get to the bottom of it, okay? Sheila oh, will she, get... What if Sheila and Dottie were both there asking about whether she was Osu? Please, bravo. That is like, yeah, I, I can't wait. We need it. Well, Jatia, we appreciate you for coming back to the podcast and covering Real Housewives of Potomac Season 8, Episode 2 with us. Hopefully, we'll be back next week covering Episode 3. Any final words before we uh get back to this barbecue? Well, I would, you know, I just wanted to bring out my oh. little over here. Yeah, I just got this. So I'm super excited. Yeah, Jatia Hart, social responsibility in the nuclear community. And so I just wanted to um, say that because part of this came from the work that I did with uh, other survivors like you and Wendell and Jamal and everybody with the CBS Diversity Initiative. So thank you. I, I took the things that I learned from doing that and actually applied it to some of the things in my own profession. So yeah, I, I think it's one of the greatest things that has come out of Survivor for me. So yay. Yes, I love that. Congratulations. Come on being a trailblazer. We appreciate you, Dr. Jatia Hart Taylor. This has been a pleasure podcasting with you. If you want to follow more about Jatia, you can follow her on all social media platforms at Jatia PhD. And we'll be back. Yes, J-T-I-A PhD. And I can't wait to be back with you all again. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Bryce, my baby boy, my my perp, as I've heard you call me. <laughs> I'm not a really big fan of that name, but love you guys. I hope everybody has a great week and See you again soon. It's the Purple Pants. It's the Purple Pants. It's the Purple Pants Podcast. You better get your headphones and listen up quick. Ooh. It's the Purple Pants Podcast. You better listen in public. Might make your stomach hurt. Ooh. It's the Purple Pants Podcast.
she tryna unwind, you better get that box wine. It's the Purple Pants Podcast, you tryna get your snack, you better hurry right back though. It's the Purple Pants, it's the Purple Pants.